Hey, welcome back to Album April. It's April 2nd, and today I listened to Vespertine by Bjork. Even though I've known about Bjork for years, I never really took the time to actually sit down and listen to her music, and I figured there's no better time to start than Album April. I did some very light research on Google, and apparently her fourth album, Vespertine, is considered by many to be her best. However, looking back on it now, I'm starting to wish I had listened to Post instead, since that album definitely has more of her most well-known songs on it. But then again, this month isn't about singles, it's about albums. The album itself, I thought, was good. I liked it more than yesterday's album, The Doors. I'm not really sure what I was expecting Bjork's music to sound like, but it wasn't really what I expected. I was thinking it was going to be really weird in, like, the vocal stylings and the lyrical content. And yes, it definitely is both of those things, but it's also very experimental in, like, the songwriting and the composition. In one of the songs, there was, like, a sort of... It kind of reminded me of Pong, and it was something that literally bounced from one ear to the other rapidly, which was only slightly less annoying than Music in Only One Ear from yesterday's album. And there was another part of the album where she straight up, like, used her breath as an instrument. Like, not even her singing, just her breathing. And it was, like, sped up and, like, repeated and, like, cut. And I thought that was kind of annoying, too. A lot of these songs sort of have the format of starting with a short, repeating loop of music. And it just sort of keeps repeating and slowly morphing into something else and building throughout the song. And how much I liked the song as a whole is pretty closely correlated with how much I liked that original short loop. I remember in the song Cocoon, I didn't like the way that one sounded and it didn't really get better. But when you look at something like Hidden Place or Frosty, which basically is just a really long intro to the next song, Aurora, I like those a lot better and I like those songs a lot better. It was really interesting listening to Bjork's vocal performance on this album. I knew that she was like an Annie Lennox, Kate Bush type. Very talented, but also very weird. But her singing voice is very interesting. There are two sides to Bjork's singing. You got the really like light, willowy, whispery sound. Like that meme about how indie girls say things weird. Like, welcome to my kitchen. Like, I'm pretty sure like Bjork was the original indie girl in that vein. But then when it gets further down in her chest, it sounds a lot different. It's um a lot more belty, but it doesn't really sound strong. She's not like a Celine Dion type. She can't just like push out those notes. It does sound like shaky, like it's going to start squeaking or breaking at any moment. It's sort of like a less intense version of Bonnie Tyler's singing voice. That side of Bjork singing I liked a lot more. It almost sounds like it would work really well in like a rock setting, and she originally was the lead singer of a rock band called The Sugar Cubes. And by the way, Bjork is a lot older than I was expecting her to be. Like, she started with that band in like the mid-80s, and then she made her like big solo debut in the early 90s, and she's been going ever since. She's almost 60 now. That's not really relevant to this review, but I guess I just wanted to demonstrate that I did not know very much about Bjork at all. I kind of thought she like appeared in the late 90s, early 2000s, and she had been going since then. If I had to pick a favorite song on the album, I think it would be Pagan Poetry. Building up to this album, Bjork really wanted to work with music boxes, and that is featured very prominently in this song. It's also one of her better vocal performances on the album. I also just found out that Pagan Poetry has one of the weirdest music videos I've ever seen in my entire life. It is age-restricted on YouTube, and I wholeheartedly agree with that call, by the way. But at this point, I'm getting off track. Overall, I thought that Vespertine was a very interesting experience. Probably more than it was a good experience, but there was a lot of good in it. I do think that Bjork is a lot like Kate Bush or Annie Lennox, where their weirdness is what you see at the beginning, but when you actually listen to her stuff, you can tell that there is a lot of passion and talent behind everything. Bjork does not seem like the kind of musician to half-ass anything, and I can definitely respect that. Alright, thank you for listening, I'll see you tomorrow.